Uh, good evening and welcome to our 26th meeting of fiscal year 2022. Um, let's call to order. Um, um, Denny Swenson, Chair. Mr. Beeler. Ms. Beeler, Secretary. Kathleen O'Donnell. Kathleen. Well, we'll do Ms. Tagayas. I was sorry, I was, I was muted. That's okay. I'm here. Okay. And Cheryl Tagayas, member. And we're expecting Meredith Paul any moment. Okay. All right. Our next meeting dates are March 24th, April 14th, and April 28th. Um, approval of minutes. Um, Rich, I, De I Denny, be before yeah. we move on from the meeting yeah. schedule, um, do you all want to talk about whether you want to continue doing remote meetings or not? Um, I've got to schedule some hearings um, mm -hmm. for April 14th. Okay. Um, how do others feel about that? I, I feel like I'm ready to return to the town hall and start doing open meetings. There's no more mask mandate at the town hall. So I didn't. I'm open to hear what other people feel. I mean, if we have meeting that looks like quick business, happy to do that via Zoom, if others are. But generally speaking, I think these, you know, these ones on our, um, like the 24th, that's just a standard meeting. Why not have it in person at the town hall? Do we know what the ventilation situation is in the Blue Conference Room if there's a large crowd in there? Tim? Um, I mean, ventilation obviously in the basement is not um, great. We do have, um, and I can double check on this if there's one that's dedicated down there, and if not, we can move one. We do have some some pretty high test um, air purifiers that we've been using um, through the pandemic, um, and then we can obviously turn you know the air conditioner on to get the air moving around. Um, so um, I can. You know, we can we can kind of talk with the facilities department about you know what the specifications and all that stuff is. Um, well, the so. one thing I would say is if we expect um, a large turnout, the room is small, and in the past people have had to overflow into the hallway, uh, and the ventilation. Uh, you know, I don't. I appreciate the fact that there's purifiers, but the ventilation isn't so good in that room. And there is a new variant that's spreading through Europe now, and it's probably coming here, I'm guessing, because that's been the trend. So I don't mind, um, you know, trying to monitor, and if you want to schedule that 14th in person, but I do just want to put a little caution for those two reasons that I just mentioned. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts on uh, whether we should have the meeting, like like the March 24th meeting, should we try to have that one in person or should we wait and see? Do you have a feeling either way, Rich? Um, but I, actually, I mean, I, I agree with what Cheryl just said. I mean, we're kind of talking the same exact thing in my company. Yeah. Um, so I, I was just going to open up the agenda. I mean, if you all know what the agenda is without me looking at it, but the 24th, is it a light one or is it? Uh, um. Yeah, let's take a, uh, Tim, you have it handy? The agenda is a lot on that. I think it's a a and R. We're going to follow up on the 44, 440 um, Granted Ave discussion. Is it 26th? Uh, 24th, March 24th. I don't see a 24 on there. What is that? On the calendar? Um, nope. hmm. it's, not, it's not on the calendar yet. Uh, oh, only Den right. Denny and I have secret information that hasn't been published yet. Ah, okay. So then only you guys would know. So uh, I'm 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 kidding around. It'll be published well within the 48 hours that's required by statute. We just haven't finalized it yet. Um, there are there are two continued public hearings. Um, the scenic road, which I think should be a relatively short continuation, considering that we wanted to have a site walk, um, and that's not happening for another two days um, after that hearing. And then the um, the 88 wharf special permit amendment. Um, Ned is going to be getting me some uh, some of the language uh, changes that the board requested, and and hopefully you know that'll be um, you know the end of that. And then we did get an A and R plan, which again hopefully is is a kind of open and shut you know matter. So there's a couple substantive things on the agenda, 
but um, I don't think they're necessarily hot button. Okay. Um, let's have uh, Meredith Hall um, move from the participants to the panelists. Um, Kathleen, did you have a feeling on whether or not we should meet in person on the 24th? You care either way in person or Zoom? No, I don't care either way. Okay. Um, Thank you for being flexible. Um, I mean, I have to wear shoes if we go in person, but you know, <laughs> other than that. I know, it's going to be something. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We don't know what this new variant is going to do. So I'm um, just waiting to check in with Meredith before we make a a decision if Sean can move her into the panelists. Um, while we're waiting for Meredith so we can wrap up that discussion, the approval of minutes, I have uh, the date of January 27th, February 8th, March 3rd, and then March 14th. Julie already has the minutes from March 14th. Has everyone been able to look at those most recent versions? Yep. I have to. Would you say March 3rd? Yeah, March 3rd. So January 27th, February 8th, March 3rd, and March 14th from right before town meeting the other night. Did, did Julia um, circulate the couple of edits I made to the 14th, the minutes on the 14th? I didn't know. I didn't notice any amendments. I put those in the folder today. Okay, yeah. so those, okay. All right, then the one I looked at already had the amendments. Okay. You know what, I'm not sure I'm looking at the right one. Be you know what, let's approve the rest and I'll, I'll, I'll have those ready for next time. All right, um, Sean, can we move Meredith Hall from the participants to the panelists? Bear with us, Meredith. We'll get you in here. Is Sean in two meetings, Tim? I think he probably is. You have yeah. hosted. Uh, oh, no, okay. you don't. So it's Ju Julia actually has co-host abilities. Um, Julia, if you go into attendees, um, do you have a participants list on the right-hand side of your uh, screen? Yes. All right. So if you click on attendees okay. and then you click on Meredith's name or you hover over Meredith's name, there should be like two, like three little periods. Um, and if you click on those, there should be an option to promote to panelists. There you go. That work? Let's find out. Hi, Meredith. Yeah. There, thank you. Sorry about that. My, my and Ju Julia, that's, <laughs> Julia, that's literally the only trick of Zoom. So consider yourself trained. Yay. Thank you, Julia. Yay. <laughs> before, we, before you go, Welcome what is up, Meredith? <laughs> I, I see that. What's the Zoom user? Is that one of uh, Milton? Uh, I don't see it. Is that in our. Um, yeah, I don't know that Zoom user. Can I see a phone number too? I don't know. Um, I'm guessing they're just numbers of people. Um, okay. Um, all right. So, um, uh, Meredith, um, do you have a preference for meeting in person or on Zoom on March fourth? I don't. I'm I'm good with that. Whatever the group wants to do is would be. Whatever the group wants to do would be fine. Okay. Um, so Cheryl, do you want to try meeting in person? But if we, if um, you know, within forty-eight hours we feel like that variant is arriving, we can readjust. Um, yeah, I'm. Excuse me, I'm fine for the twenty-fourth. Um, we can play person. a party. Um, um, and if if it's not um, anticipated that it will draw a, a lot of. Uh, people who are interested in participating in commenting, and I think it's okay. We have a public hearing, um, although 
We do have uh, May, do we have the uh, town meeting, May town meeting warrant articles on that agenda? Uh, we, we will put them on that agenda in, in case we need to discuss anything. I think it'll be, probably be a standing item um, on most of our agendas between now and May, but do you have a thought on that? I'm sorry, public, I, I do wanna get to the public. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I guess um, I would just be concerned that some people might um, be concerned about participating in person if there's if they feel it's going to be a lot of people in a small room without without a lot of ventilation, would that inhibit people from attending? Um, so I I, <laughs> I, I, guess I have no preference of going. I mean, honestly, it's um, I don't see value like either like either way. So I mean, if folks want to stay on the Zoom, I'm part of that too. I don't like unless we're um, I don't know. I just, I just don't see value. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I'd like to eventually get there. It's just, I don't I want to force anybody into a public room. Uh, we aren't really there yet in the world. Okay. Um, all right. I am hearing a lot of interest from the public, but I, I could just be hearing it one-sided. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, I, that's fair. It's just um, yeah. for the board. And I think it's up to us what, where we're going to want to be. I mean, the public has access. And actually, I, I have not taken statistics, but far more people join our call. Yeah. To, to actually be able to speak on Zoom than they do in person. Um, I never see more than four or five people in, in the room at all. But for what's worth. You okay. know, another an, another thing that we can we can do, um, you know, and and maybe I would kind of save this option for when the weather gets a little bit warmer is, um, you know, see if the Cronin is available on Thursday evenings. Um, that's a situation where you can open the windows. Yeah. Um, you know, we can run a fan um, if we need to from, from from a ventilation perspective. But again, you know, obviously you want to keep an eye on on cases and, and kind of see whatever um, whatever the town hall policies are. Um, you know, but yeah, the, I mean, the basement is a tough is a little bit of a tough situation. Um, but you you can open the windows in the in the Cronin room. Okay. Well, I'm I'm sensing hesitation to to start our going public on the 24th. So I think, why don't we do Zoom on the 24th? And you have to post something on April 14th, Tim? Yeah, so I've got to get an ad in the paper starting next week. Um, no, actually not next week. Um, let me look at the calendar real quick. So if it's the 14th, I need to run it on the 31st and the 7th. So, um, so that's a situation where... Um, you know, maybe let's let's revisit this issue next week um, as it relates to the 14th. Um, well, if it's a if it if you expect a big crowd, we could just assume the next two would be Zoom. Is that a good idea? I think that's fair enough. Okay, let's just do that so we don't have to take so much time out of uh, the meeting schedule. Sound good, everyone? Yep. Good. Uh, okay. A approval of minutes. So, um, January 27th, February 8th. March 3rd. Everybody good with those? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Secretary Beeler, should we make a motion? Oops. Sorry, it's on mute. And every time you were saying the note, saying oh, them, I okay. wasn't pulling up my notes, so now they're up. So you said February 28th, March 3rd. March. Uh, sorry, I tripped you up. January 27th. Oh, sorry. Hold February eighth, March third. February twenty eighth, March third. That was February last. 8th. Sorry, February eighth. February eighth, March third. Correct. And just, I'm so sorry to inter interrupt, but I just okay. want to make sure that the, the, the February eighth edits that I put in there today uh, are acceptable. Um, yeah. Yes. That everybody saw those. Yeah. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Okay. All right. So. So yeah. So I move to accept the as amended January twenty seventh, February eighth, and March third meeting minutes. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor, Mr. Beeler. Yes. Ms. Hall. Yes. Ms. O'Donnell. Yes. Mr. Gaius. Yes. Great. Thank you. Tim, would you like to give us a staff update? 
Uh, sure. Uh, wow. It seems like it's just been town meeting and maybe <laughs> for the past quite some time. Um, just a couple, um, a, a couple notes on on upcoming meetings. I, I may have mentioned this in a previous staff update, but those two public hearings that we've got on the 14th, one is for um, the uh, renewal of the special permit for the A. Thomas and Sons landscaping business. Um, this is a special permit that needs to be uh, renewed periodically. Um, I think I, I haven't seen anything or heard anything dramatic about that one. So hopefully um, it's not a big deal. Um, the other one is uh, the a, um, a special permit uh, amendment uh, for Walcott Woods. Um, you know, again, kind of consolidating a number of the- Recording. Recording. Sorry, I just got in. That was spooky. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this up. No. Could we maybe? Oh, I can mute. That's good. Um, sorry about that. Sorry, Meredith. Um, the the Walcott Woods amendment um, is just a sort of a, a bundle of kind of small amendments that they wanted to get done in one kind of shot. So there's some material changes. There's some configuration changes. Um, but again, I, I don't think it's anything that's out of character with um, the types of events we've been doing. Um, just a couple other things that we have been um, working on. Um, I'm going to give it another um, couple days on um, resumes for the assistant town planner position. Um, I was talking with um, with our assistant town administrator about that. I think we're going to give it another week. Um, we've gotten some promising resumes, um, and so we'll start trying to have an interview process. Um, you know, in the next week, week and a half. Um, so I'll definitely keep you posted on that. Um, the other, the, the, the final thing that I, I wanted to kind of keep you all posted on, it's a sort of a, a little bit of a tangential issue, but just so that you're kind of aware, um, we got an earmark uh, out, of, out of this year's state budget to do some pre-development site investigation work on, on town-owned parcels. And so I've, um, I just got bids in this week. We've procured um, surveying services for, um, for three parcels that I think we're targeting for, you know, potential, you know, just looking at them in terms of what the possibilities are, either for development or open space or recreation or anything. Um, uh, one of which being the town farm parcel um, that is the, the sort of the remainder after, um, after the Pulte project was, was kind of started. Um, and then there are a couple others, um, you know, so these are things that, um, you know, probably a little bit far off before there's something that's on the planning board's radar. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I was charged with very early on when I, I started as the, uh, the director was to sort of start evaluating town owned land for, um, you know, whether it's disposal for affordable housing purposes or other municipal purposes or um, parks and open space, uh, you know, purposes, um, you know, that's kind of related to the open space planning process. So this is just something that, um, you know, we got some money to do it and uh, we're doing it and uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then um, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, I, I probably did because it's a real feather in our cap, but we did get um, a $75,000 grant from the Seaport Economic Council to do uh, permitting and uh, design work for potential uh, dredging of the um, Neponset River from uh, Milton Landing out to the Neponset Bridge. Um, this is kind of something that is the a companion piece to a lot of the work that the planning board's been doing um, in Milton Village as it relates to the zoning and the sort of the landing area. So um, that sort of effort is, is really kind of spreading its wings way out to um, to Dorchester Bay. <laughs> um, so. Uh, that was very exciting. Uh, we'll let you know kind of the results of that. You know, we're hoping that it'll lead into some uh, grant money for potential, um, you know, actual dredge work, um, which would really open up a landing to, um, you know, a, a lot more kind of better, you know, recreational, you know, transportation um, and kind of, you know, uh, enjoyment of sort of the natural environment via the water um, down there. So we're, we're we're pretty excited about that. And then. Um, yeah, that, that's that, that's basically it. The other thing that I'm doing is just kind of, you know keeping my eye out for um, technical assistance resources for um, the uh, MPTA community zoning. Um, I did draw up um, the comments of, from the planning board. I sent those along to the select board. Um, I, I, I my my assumption is that they intend to incorporate those into their letter, but they'll be talking about that at their meeting next week. 
Um, so if there's any, if they decide not to do that, um, we've got time on the 24th to maybe decide to um, uh, submit um, your own comment letter. Um, but but again, I don't I don't see any reason why the select board wouldn't um, incorporate that into theirs. So I'll keep you posted on that. Um, that's all I've got for now. Okay. Um, uh, Meredith was kicked out of the meeting by accident. She's trying to get back in. Um, could Julia move Meredith Hall in from the participants into the panelists? Thank you for that update, Tim. I have I have host abilities now. Oh, oh could you so help me? I can, oh, yeah. thank you. Hi, Meredith. Hi. Welcome back. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. No, oh, that's okay. It's a crazy Zoom night here. Okay. Um, so we will open up the public hearing. We'll reopen the public hearing for the citizen petition to amend the temporary apartment bylaw um, at Maytown meeting, continued for March 3rd. So good evening. Um, let's see. I, I thought we could talk a little bit about the article. I, I noticed we do seem to have some some um, citizens here tonight. I'm, I'm wondering if they might want to talk about this. Oh, Kathleen, did you get bounced out? Huh, are you, oh, you're in two places. Okay, all right. Um, so um, just a quick, you know, um, this article, um, it's a citizen article. Um, it, these amendments are in response to the public discussion goal of improving um, this existing apartment bylaw. Um, the idea is that it includes improvements. A new language opens up and expands who can occupy the units. It expands the footprint of the units to add additions and detached garages. It makes the termination of the unit easier and less costly for the applicant. It makes the creation of the units less costly to create. Um, you don't need as many design plans and you don't need to do as much structural things inside. Um, selling the house ends the temporary apartment status, but new language makes it easier for the new owner to apply for a new term without having to go to the Board of Appeals. They can simply apply through the building inspector. So that's much easier for the applicant. Um, renewal of the four-year term is an easier process. Um, with more notice and extension offered um, to the family that wants to do a temporary apartment by law, um, no, wants to do a temporary apartment. So, um, so did anyone on the board want to speak to the temporary apartment by law before I open it to the public? Yes. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Um, as a general rule, I'm in favor of citizens petitions. I think they, you know, are, they take a lot of effort and I appreciate the fact that people go through that effort to, you know, um, address a need that they feel isn't being covered by the existing, you know, boards and commissions. Although I do have to say that, you know, is I've seen some completely crazy ones in my years as town council that could really, <laughs> really be a problem. Um, but um, I, you know, after last night's display, I'd have to say, of parliamentary machinations, misinformation, no opportunity to speak in favor of the article. Um, I just can't be just leaping into voting as I normally would in support of a citizen's petition. And so I really want to take this opportunity to um, correct some of the misinformation and, and, and downright you know, terrible lies that I heard and, and were shared with me through emails and other th th things. So I was, we were told One, that ADUs, I think we need to stay, I think we need to stay on the discussion. Listen, on this Meredith, article. I really We're talking about a discussion. I know, I I'm just saying. That. I appreciate that. I appreciate your opinion, but th this. I think we need to separate was, the two. No, I, I will get to my point if you can just wait a minute. I do have a point okay. to this. Okay. So I just want to say, first of all, ADUs were told we were going to destroy our count for a 40B, wouldn't be able to beat back any of these things. I want to point out that temporary apartments count on our subsidized housing inventory the same way an ADU does. And people should know that. Just because you call them temporary, they still get a certificate of occupancy and they count. So that was wrong. Secondly, there's all this talk about the fact that ADUs create a two family, a two family. 
as if there's some sort of you know lesser order of being of two family housing. They're all over town. We got 570 of them. And you know, they're they're everywhere. And guess what? A temporary apartment creates a two family the same way. Because if you read our admittedly outdated and probably needs to be fixed up zoning bylaw, a two family is a two family house fitted to be occupied by two families which are independent of each other as regards to the preparation of food. So you have two kitchens and a wall between those two. Just because grandma's in it doesn't mean it's not a two family. Our bylaw has a pretty bizarre definition of two families and temporary apartments would be a two family. So people should know that temporary apartments are not a savior for 40B. They're not something separate from a two family. They're creating the same thing. And I, we were accused of not doing work on compromise. And I spent a lot of time working on trying to go to compromise. And the one thing that we couldn't compromise on was making sure that it could only be occupied by family members. And so last night, there was a lot of discussion about the fact that if the ADU bylaw went to the attorney general's office, that, oh, my God, they'll review it and they'll throw it out. Well, I would point out that in 2020, the town of Brookline's accessory dwelling unit went to the AG's office. I got a copy of that decision, and they questioned the fact that Brookline tried to limit their accessory dwelling units to family members. And the AG said, you know, you should be really checking this with town council because you can get sued for Fair Housing Act violations and for violations of General Laws Chapter 151B. And you could be holding up a property owner could get challenged by somebody because you have set this up in a way that you are now keeping out people that, you know, you're discriminating and you're reducing housing choice and housing opportunity to targeted members. And so you could, it's a real risk. So I think that um, my thought on this is that I think this is not ripe to go and I would be in favor of a motion that says that we're going to recommend it. Our recommendation is to send it to back to the planning board for further study. And that's my point. Um, I, I need a, an opinion from town council to do anything other than vote no or yes in, in recommending it forward. Because I don't think that we can, it's, it's in effect. I don't think the planning board has the ability to prevent the article, a citizen article from going to town meeting floor. Jenny, well, that's that, hilarious no. because you spent all this time spending. It's a citizen a article. Community. I'm talking about a citizen article. I'm not, I, no, I'm not talking about a planning board. I'm talking about a citizen article. Jenny, can I, I, I just I, offer a comment yeah, on, um, on the ice house when that was originally the ice house property on um, Blue Hills Parkway? There was originally a citizen's petition to craft zoning for that site. Uh, the planning board was asked to uh, provide their thoughts on that. And the planning board at that time uh, offered a recommendation to send it to the planning board for study. And then what came back was an article sponsored by the planning board. Um, I think a April Anderson um, spearheaded that rewrite. Um, and so they're, they're, uh, that's why I think um, uh, Kathleen is asking for us to do, you're, you're correct in that the citizens petition will be on the warrant. It will go to the, uh, to the town meeting, um, but it, we're still asked for our recommendation. And I would support Kathleen's um, suggestion that our recommendation be to send this to the planning board for further study. And in part, it's because uh, we had all agreed that the town meeting should have an opportunity to debate the merits of the ADU article, and that hasn't happened. And what Tim in his uh, memos to us has said that there are many deficiencies in his view, and I think in many people's view, in the existing temporary apartment the section of the bylaw. I don't think the citizens petition goes far enough in correcting the deficiencies. And therefore, if we're going to take this up, I would like the planning board to be able to discuss going further. Uh, one of the things that I think is incredibly deficient is that there's no express purpose uh, for this section. And how are members to know 
if uh, an application is meeting the purpose if there is no stated purpose. And so that's just one example. So I would uh, be in support of uh, our recommendation being to send this to the planning board for further study. Um, okay, as I said, I, I need an opinion of town council on that. And, um, and I believe that Tim's recommendation was that if the ADU article did not pass, that he thought that this was progress. Tim can chime in if he wants to or not. But I, my understanding was that we did have some progress here. I understand it's not as much progress as you would have liked to have had on some of those items that you wanted to accomplish. But there is some progress here that is worth um, working toward. Um, I was planning to recommend that the planning board recommend that the Warren Committee and the town meeting approve the citizens proposed amendments to the temporary apartment bylaw section three, subsection A, paragraph nine. Um, because I, I feel that it is progress, you know, for the reasons that I mentioned it, we do have families in need. We had, I mean, I don't think any of these things that it does is, is, is controversial. We, they're all fine and good things to do. I understand you would like to do more, um, but some of those things were, you know, were a little bit controversial and um, didn't, you know, the town meeting voted last night and they- No, the town meeting did not get to hear from the people who sponsored this article and from the supporters who sponsored it. And that is totally misleading to say that the town meeting spoke last night. The, I, well, the town meeting, I mean, you sent your information sheet, you, you know, you, you guys had every opportunity to talk as much as anybody else did. I mean, it was, there were, it that's not absolute. that's not true at all, Jenny, okay. because we, I paid attention to the moderator who said that the purpose of the discussion was to be discussing the warrant committee's recommendation. And we were not to be spoken, speaking to the, uh, the content of the article itself. Tom moderator said that and I obey. Okay, but that's fine. So I, I, I understand your point, but I also understand that in, in explaining why you would want it sent back or not, you could refer to aspects of the article and that's what people did. Um, so Some people did, not everyone. And, and I didn't have an opportunity to do that. I wasn't, you know, jumped in at any point. To First that. of all, you had an opening at the beginning, which you could have done a PowerPoint, you could have done a presentation, you could have done anything you wanted. Oh, no, 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 no. We were on the, the beginning of the meeting was discussing the Warren Committee's recommendation, not so, the so PowerPoint is this, is this presentation. So is this simply payback because you're unhappy about last night? So you're going to, you know, stop the, stop progress on, on the citizens article that the citizens have put forward? As it I said. Good. It sounds punitive. It sounds like I didn't get my way. Therefore, oh, I'm going to. You know, that's just so unfair, Denny. Absolutely unfair. Okay. I was right. there at the meeting, paying attention, listening, and all the rest of that stuff. We spent three hours discussing whether or not the article could go to the floor. Nobody mm -hmm. got to talk about the article itself. And 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 that game that's was because set up. The that's because that the town meeting voted up. that way. That was set up. That was a what? total setup. What does that mean? That was, what, what, what does that mean? I mean? Every citizen, every town meeting member had an opportunity to vote and to, to speak up. And it was sent back and it was, and everybody had a, you know, they could speak on the merits of moving it no, forward. No, they could not. They were told. The merits of moving it forward, of moving it, of the they decision. By the Warrant Committee. On the Warrant Committee. The, the, the votes the often start, so there's a recommendation and then people vote on the recommendation. That's standard. That's what happens at town meeting all the time. There's a recommendation and then there's another recommendation. Yeah, I vote on the recommendation. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm perplexed. My, my, um, experience in the past, uh, I was four years on the Warrant Committee and seven years on this board, is that you would hear a presentation of the article, you would have a debate, and if it's then at that time, if, it, if the debate made sense to send it back, there would be a recommendation to send it back for further study. 
I've never seen a zoning article where the warrant committee made that recommendation from the beginning. And then at town meeting, the sponsor of the article was never given an opportunity to present it because it went right to the warrant committee's recommendation. It should have gone to the Kathleen first to present the article. And then there could be a debate about the merits of the article and whether to send it back. So, you know what? There were lots of people who came and testified. There were lots of people who were town meeting members who were ready to speak that never had a chance to. So I think we need to really just stick to the suggestion that there are things about this citizen's petition that are beneficial. They don't go far enough. We said that we would wait to see what the vote of town meeting was. That, that didn't happen. I'd like to see that vote happen at the May town meeting. And, you know, I, I don't think we're going to get anywhere by arguing about whether um, the town meeting made that decision last night. Um, so I would like to see what Rich has to say, and then I would like to hear from the public. Um, okay, yeah. I just want to clarify. Sorry, Rich, before, I, I'm sorry, one second. So I'm sorry, I'm just trying to understand. So you feel that the moderator did something in the wrong order at right out of the gate. Is that what I'm hearing? What was the setup? I just want to understand it. What? I didn't say the word setup, but what I will say is I feel as if the article needed to be presented if the moderator was going to let so much commentary in the people who were opposed to moving it forward. He needed to let there then be the debates on the merit from both sides. What he said was to stick to the merits for sending it back. And at that point, there had been no, no presentation. So how would anybody really even, if they had questions they wanted to ask about the merits, they weren't able to ask them because it wasn't, we weren't, that's not what we were talking about in the beginning. So, you know, it, and so there things that could have been explained or asked about never had that opportunity. And, and so it, it's not, I, I wouldn't consider that to be a fair debate on the merits of the article. Uh, because it it never had the chance. Okay, so, well, thank you for explaining that to me. I, I didn't mean to get so far off of topic. I know there's, there's citizens here tonight. I feel like I agree with you, Cheryl, that we should probably turn to them, but I, I feel like I interrupted Rich. Rich, did you want to speak for no, a moment? No, I, I, I mean, I guess I'd, I'd like to see us um, move, um, move to hearing from the public so we don't delay that. I, I do... I did find interesting what Kathleen was talking about because a couple of the points that she made were some of the reasons why we heard last night that folks didn't want to talk about the ADU and they did want to send it back. Um, I, I will, from my point of view, I, I really don't want to like debate yesterday, but I will say, I mean, I spent six or more years on the Warren Committee myself. I've never once ever saw a motion to send back not still come before the, the, the town meeting to talk about merits on both sides. This was awkward. I, I, I've never actually seen that before. I mean, I've only been going to town meeting for 11 years now, not as much as many, many people that call in and, and go to them. I, mm -hmm. I'm honestly, I've got my, my Robert's Rules of Book on the table here. I'm going to be reading it because I, I don't understand it. I actually, I've just never seen that before. Usually, when the work committee makes a recommendation, you hear the size, you vet it out, you talk about it, and then the final vote is on the recommendation of the work committee. And, and that seemed, and, and I, maybe I'm just off and I didn't, maybe this was a different thing, but it was very weird how it went through. And so I, I do personally, I don't, I don't want to attack anybody and I don't know who sent letters out and this or that, but I did get one in the mail that was emphatically wrong. And what I worry about is my neighbors read it and they think that we were trying to do something that we weren't. Now, I'm, every point that we made on the 80 bylaw, you can, you know, you can fight both sides and I'm fine with that, but there was some patently wrong things in the letter that I received and I was not happy with it. And so I personally didn't have time because I received it two days before town meeting and I, and I just could not run out and knock on every neighbor's door. Um, and so, I don't honestly want to go too far on this call with that because we're on to something else. I, so back to that, my comment is, I, some of the, I think I, if I wrote them down right, there was like three points 
that I captured that Kathleen made it directly. I heard them directly yesterday at town meeting where folks were worried about things that were going to get held up in the AG's office or could get off, could get changed. And quite honestly, you don't, and again, I've only been on this board, I'm about to enter my fifth year, um, but normally when something large bylaw change comes around, um, the planning board adopts it to vet it out. And so if truly yesterday the warrant committee was worried about us not investing the time to truly vet it out, I, I would be in favor of vetting this out and bringing it to the next meeting um, so that we don't end up where we were last night as looking like we didn't vet something out. We've only talked about this. This will be the first night. Um, no, we did all. have a public hearing on this. This will be our second night. Oh. But we just saved it. We just saved the vote till after the ADU because we wanted to give the ADU. Yeah. Its no, no, I don't want to debate it, Denny. I'm just, this is my No, this I'm, my just, I'm just, I just wanted to clarify that we did have a public hearing on this. We did get familiar with this citizen article. If you want to have more time, you are welcome. Again, that's just my my opinion. I don't. Again, I don't. I don't want to. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not disagreeing with you. I just wanted. We did have one public hearing on this. No, we, I know. I just. I feel like I'm. I'm debating. Like, you know. Again, I. I have total respect for you. I just. I feel like if I say something now, I'm going to debate it. Every everything I say. And I just. This is our opinion. We just we're, normally we go around the table. We give our opinion, and then we talk through them. But we've only like so. Again, I'm not trying to point to last night, but we had 13 meetings and I don't know how many hours. We've only had a few hours to talk about this. Kathleen brought up some serious points that would actually hurt folks if it gets adopted um, and do something that they didn't want it to do. And so my thing is, if any of those are true, I'm not saying that Kathleen's wrong, but if they're true, absolutely, we should talk about those a little bit more before we get to town meeting because no matter what the public is going to say tonight, we have to dive into those things. Okay. Um, Kathleen, quickly, do you have your list of three things? I just wanted to think about it while I listen to the public as well. Do, you, do Could you repeat those three things? I, I, I sort of missed Certainly. it. Certainly. Certainly, okay. Denny. So the first one is that the um, temporary apartments will count towards the subsidized housing inventory. So people okay. need to understand that. Yeah. Remember that. Okay, because yep. there was the issue that ADUs would, but TAs won't, they will. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with them counting. But okay. we had a cap in the ADUs. There's no cap in the temporary department. Okay. I just, I so don't see the that first on one any of the, the mailings. I, I didn't know if, it was that on Facebook? Because I didn't see that on any of the mailings. I mean, I don't know where, I'm trying to understand where the misinformation is coming from. But, it, and I know it's hard because it was out well, to the public. Whoa, I mean, I don't know. I got, I mean, I, well, I got some I, I got completely a, uh, hair I got raising. I emailing from the, yeah. neighborhood, the Coalition of Neighborhood Associations. I got a, yeah. an in the mail. That's the author. Mm -hmm. I okay. believe the number of emails came that route with the same information. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, the second one is that it's, it, we, it, we, there was a piece of mailing that said stop two family. Now, see, these are two families, and, okay. and they are two families. TAs are, as well as ADUs, okay. which so, goes to George Asher's it. point last night about the fact that our zoning code should, you know, mesh better. You know, I mean, it's been done in pieces since 1926 or something. And so it, it's kind of a mess, quite honestly. Okay. And so, you know, he made that point last night that, you know, these things should mesh together better. So it was a legitimate point. So that's, okay. so they, so they are two families, they do count. And I do have a concern about the family language okay. um, because it's a federal housing, fair housing violation, I believe. Um, and, and everybody defines families these days in different ways. And so I think that would be where I would put my focus on is to look at, to try to, you know, to sort of address that family issue. Cause I think that's a problem. I, I think, I think there is, um, we could expand the thing, family language if, if maybe some, I think we should, if, I think we should expand the family language. I just don't know if it's out of scope at this point in the stage, maybe we, I'm sorry, go ahead, Cheryl. Just my understanding is if the citizens petition goes the way it's written. So if we want to make anything changes, we need to send it back for further studies. I just want to make that point clear. 
Unless or we or we could let it pass and then and then adjust it at a future date. I mean, it's it, that's another way to do it. But if it's okay, that's confusing. I think for folks, I'd rather have the time spent on it to address the things that this board thinks should be addressed. All right. Um, all right. Let's open it up to the public. Um, I don't have hosting abilities, but Tim, could you help me? Um, um, welcome, sure. Ms. Uh, yeah, Rachel Pazer. Um, you should and be Tim. able to talk if you unmute yourself. And Tim, Hi. if you could put the clock. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Thank you, Ms. Pozer. Welcome. Good evening. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My name is Rachel Pozar. I live at 7 Galen Street and I'm a town meeting member in Precinct 8. And it's my understanding based on the mailings that I've received that the citizens petitions being presented as a reasonable alternative to the proposed ADU bylaw. And I also seem to gather that its proponents believe that the only problem with the temporary apartment bylaw is that it requires burdensome plans and doesn't allow for the tenancy of childcare providers. But this really reflects a fundamental misinterpretation of the intent of accessory dwelling units and the demands that they might address. Um, so you may know that the AARP is in favor of ADUs, and in a survey that they conducted, 86% of respondents said that they would consider creating an accessory unit to provide housing for relatives, friends, or a loved one in need of care. And 69% said that they would do so to increase the value of their home. And these you know, um, statements from retired persons highlight the shortcomings of the proposed art amendment. Um, both the existing bylaw and the proposed amendment presume to identify who the homeowner's loved ones are on the own homeowner's behalf. Um, the bylaw permits parents and grandparents, but not cousins or a sibling or even a close friend. The restriction to family is an overreach and it ignores the kinship networks that exist in many communities. Um, it also restricts the homeowner's right to decide for themselves who they will welcome onto their property. And even worse, it perpetuates class discrimination and gatekeeping by ensuring that the only new residents who occupy these units are the, immediately, are the immediate family members of those who are already affluent enough to live here. Um, my second criticism, and I'm wrapping up, is that creating a temporary apartment requires a significant investment on the part of a homeowner. And then requiring the apartment to be destroyed after the tenant moves out places an undue burden on the homeowner and doesn't do anything to enhance the property value. And oddly, the proposed amendment would short, shorten the grace period for removing the temporary kitchen from 60 days to 30. Um, I think that homeowners deserve to protect their investment and to decide for whom the investment is worth it. So I strongly recommend that you recommend town meeting send this article back to the planning board. Thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Poser. Um, the, the, um, the amendments actually, um, the, the selling house ends the temporary apartment status, but the new language makes it easier for the new owner to apply for a new term um, without having to go to the Board of Appeals. They can simply go to the building inspector and the renewal of the four-year ter terms is an easier process with, with more notice and extensions. I, I do understand your points and I, I just wanted to just add a, a little bit of detail, a little bit of nuance to, to um, to the logic. Um, sure. Thank you. Thank you for your points. And and I I actually agree with you. I I do think that family language could be expanded. So I, I do think that's something that our board should really talk about and think about going forward. So thank you. Thank you for your patience waiting for us to begin this public discussion. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um let's see, Tim, if you could help invite our next guest. Um We've got Frank Schroth. Um, oh, yes. You can unmute, Frank. Good evening, Mr. Good Schroth. Good evening. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I'm Frank Schroth, 39 Avalon Road, a town meeting member for Precinct 2. Um, I have to say, first, uh, I'm, I have no interest in really trying to evaluate yet another article. Uh, I'd much rather address the article that had come before the board, come before town meeting last night. And while I may sound harsh, I just need to express my disappointment with last night's meeting and your role in it, Madam Chair. I've never witnessed the chair of an elected board display such disregard for the will of the board they chair as you have, culminating in that orchestrated nonsense with Mr. Fahey. 
I believe it was a disservice to your fellow board members and the residents who elected them. I feel you are abusing your power as chair and I don't appreciate it. I put an enormous amount of time researching last night's article. Like Ms. O'Donnell has commented, there was an, a tremendous misinformation campaign. I had numerous residents and neighbors coming up to me saying, oh my God, they're gonna turn my whole neighborhood into a row of two families. It was completely incorrect, completely out of scope of what the intent and the merits of that article uh, contained. And I just regret terribly the town meeting did not have an opportunity to debate the merits and was never even given a presentation by the author of the article. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for your comments, um, Mr. Schreck. I, I, I do respect your opinion. I, I, I also feel that it is okay for the minority of a board to, to share their opinion during debate on an article. Um, I, I was asked to share my opinion. I did share my opinion. I, I respect your opinion, but I, I do think in democracy, I mean, the whole the whole point of, of bringing it to town meeting was to debate it. We, I answered the questions that were asked of me. Um, thank you for your with all, participation. With all, due, with all due respect, though, it, it felt like it was an orchestrated event. And Mr. Faye, that you you had you had prepared comments. Mr. Faye, I did prepare. I do prepare my comments. I was well, sure, but, the, but and I was welcome to speak, and and there were other people that wanted to hear the minority's opinion, and I was prepared to give it. And and okay, very and good. and very good. and it's. I think it's perfectly within reason to for people to ask for the minority opinion and for the minority opinion to be shared on any topic by by any member of any. I mean, well, that's the way okay. I feel. I respect you feel differently. I, I understand. And thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, do we have anybody? I'm sorry. Could you help us? Um, could you help um, me? Too? Yeah, Thank we've you. got um, Alex Whiteside next. Oh, good. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Whiteside. Good evening. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good evening. All right. Uh, getting to the uh, actual article that we're considering, which has to do with amendments to the detached one family dwelling with temporary apartment bylaw, which is in effect. And you all have Marion McKetrick's letter. Did, and, um, did the rest of the board get the letter from Marion McKetrick today? You got it. I did too. Thank you. Do you get it, Rich? Got it, everybody? Okay. Marion is a lawyer and she represents many elderly homeowners who want to have a temporary apartment. And um, there are the current bylaw throws up obstacles which are not necessary. And uh, this article makes some small changes, but significant changes to the temporary apartment bylaw. Uh, it expands the locations for temporary apartments to include houses with new additions. It uh, um, adds caregivers and child care providers to uh, um, related persons uh, eligible for tenancy. It uh, uh, also adds child care providers to caregivers who can be tenants with other people. Um, the design requirements are modified uh, so as to require a showing of what the uh, uh, what the expanded house would look like. Um, the termination provisions are the same, but 
sale of the premises can be uh, the new owner after sale of the premises can by simply talking to by simply filing with the building inspector a, a notarized statement uh, get the permit extended without having to go to the board of appeals and the same is true on renewals the current homeowners don't have to go to the board of appeals to get a renewal they can do it through the building inspector. Uh, the uh, uh, owner occupancy requirements are relaxed so that an owner occupant can uh, still be considered a resident even if he takes a vacation, even if he goes away for up to six months. Uh, There really is, it, everything here is meant to benefit elderly homeowners. And the, the you, you know, the bylaw is in effect. The bylaw is in effect and all the restrictions we seek to eliminate are in effect. And there's no good reason not to eliminate them. And, and don't get me wrong, I think that there are plenty of ways that this article, the temporary apartment article, can be improved. I think that the tenancy restrictions can be relaxed further. Um, and even, even the idea of having an unrelated person um, in the temporary apartment uh, can be workable, can be done, but there has to be some reason. It can't be, I, I seems to me that it isn't all or nothing. Uh, you can go from family and add people with some sort of significant relationship uh, who is not family without just saying it's anyone. Um, but that is not what's before us now. What's before us now are some modest but significant changes which will benefit elderly homeowners who want temporary apartments in coming months. And turning your back on these homeowners by saying, no, we, we understand that these are burdensome requirements, but we won't eliminate them because whatever the reason, you don't want to eliminate them, but you should want to eliminate them because it's good for the town and it's good for the people in the town. And there's really nothing controversial about any of them. And you have had a public hearing and an opportunity to read and consider them uh, and asking for more time, I don't think is, uh, uh, I don't, I don't see any reason for it myself. Um, and I guess, uh, speculation about the word family and whether or not people will uh, consider that a restriction to family members is discriminatory. Um, I think that's just speculation. I personally don't think it is. I think that uh, uh, the legal community has a, a, a strong advocacy group for family. And uh, um, I don't personally, as a lawyer, uh, consider that there is a significant problem with our current bylaw. But it can be changed, but make these change. These changes don't mean that there can't be further changes. In fact, these changes would open the way to further changes. Um, and I really urge you to uh, uh, look at it for what it was. Read Marion's letter. She says that her clients would be benefited by these changes. There's no reason not to make them. And I urge you uh, to vote in favor of a recommendation that the town meeting adopt them. 
And I guess that's uh, all I can say. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Whiteside. Um, let's see. Um, could we welcome? Um, We've got Marion next. Great. Good evening, Marion. Good evening, Ms. McKetrick. Good evening. Good can evening. You yes, we can hear you fine. Uh, well, I don't have to say too much about my letter because Mr. Whiteside just pretty much summarized it. But let me just say this. You know, I'm, I'm a town meeting member too. So I, I went through that town meeting last night. I don't want to talk about it except to say that I wish there had been a debate in the article because the substance of the article having been discussed at town meeting would have helped all of us figure out what the specific problems are and what the changes should be. And we didn't get that debate. So, you know, that leaves, I don't, I'd like to see you make some progress somehow. This citizen's article has been, you know, I've seen several versions over the last few months. This one is fairly straightforward. It really just makes two substantial changes. These are changes that we've been looking for for a long time. If you're an attorney who represents these clients in these temporary apartment applications, the Board of Appeals would like to see them. The first change being that you can have a, you can legally apply for a special permit for a temporary apartment as you were building a new addition on your house. I haven't had a single application where somebody wasn't doing that, but under the current bylaw, you have to apply for a variance. Fortunately, and I think it's important for everybody to understand this, the, the neighborhoods support these applications. I have never heard criticism of the temporary apartment use. It serves a great purpose. It, it, it supports aging in place. It's a tremendous tool for a family that has a child with a disability who becomes an adult and needs a place to live and where they want to still have the child living close by but be independent. Uh, so whether the, whether the accessory apartment bylaw becomes the replacement for the temporary apartment bylaw or not, there needs to be more work on how you would do that and how you'd combine them. I don't know that that work's going to be completed by the Maytown meeting. I don't even know if there's time to submit any kind of revised article for the Maytown meeting. Meanwhile, these changes are straightforward changes that are needed in the current bylaw. I don't have any objection to them. So, you know, if this is, this will be presented to town meeting, I intend to support the article because I think these changes are needed. I think there's a lot more work that could be done on the concept of the accessory apartment and how this, this use could become part of that. I don't think it precludes going forward with making the amendments. I do understand the feelings that the members have expressed. Um, I think you all worked very hard on this, spent a tremendous amount of time on it. I did attend all of the hearings, which I usually don't have time to do. Um, it was an interesting discussion. It wasn't really, I, I, it was hard to see what the path forward was going to be. I was really looking forward to the debate at town meeting, and we just didn't get to it. So I, I'm very disappointed about that. Um, I, you know, I, I think whatever can fairly debate it, be debated about these changes should be. It's going to be because this is going to go to town meeting either way, and uh, 10 Citizens article has to go forward. Um, I you know, if the planning board ends up as a majority recommending that, that it be studied further, then I'm sure town meeting will pay attention to your recommendation. That would simply mean delaying these changes. They're, they, they should be incorporated in any future accessory apartment language or, or new revisions for the temporary apartment bylaw. I don't see any reason to delay making them now. It, it, it takes months to go to the next town meeting and be ready for the next bylaw proposal, the, the revision of what we've been talking about. Meanwhile, you know, for I think the last two and a half years, we've been looking for this, particularly this change to allow a temporary apartment in an addition. It's just, it's the way people are doing these. And I, it, it doesn't seem right that we have to go before the Board of Appeals and I have to argue the criteria for a variance, which is a very strict standard, 
in these cases. The Board of Appeals is being generous in, in going ahead and granting the variances because there's unanimous support for, the, for doing these apartments this way. So I, I certainly would support going forward with this change. And I don't think it in any way precludes going back to the accessory apartment proposals, which I strongly support continuing to work on. And I hope the planning board intends to do that. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. McKetrick. Thank you. And is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak tonight on this matter? Uh, yes, I see a Carol Stalker. Good, I'm mute. Uh, yep, yep, you've been unmuted. Good evening, Ms. Stalker. Hi. I just wanted to um, disclose, I think we're both on the garden club together. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I know that's. Um, I just uh, wanted to say that I really agree. Um, I'm Carol Stalker um, at Precinct 5, uh, 291 Hillside Street. Um, um, I'm 72 year old retiree of modest means. So I'm probably the kind of Milton residence that all this is aimed at. Um, and I really agree with what Mary McKittrick and Alex Whiteside said. That really made sense to me. Um, and um, I've been talking about this with a lot of my friends who just coincidentally mostly seem to be about my age. I guess that's the way things go. Your friends tend to be your own age. And um, I haven't really found any that are in favor of the ADU proposal as it exists. Um, and, and, and the thing that really turns them off the most, I think, is the idea of renting of, of, of renting their home to a, a family of strangers while they're still living in half of it. I think as you get older, you get set in your ways and you, you're, you are, if you're going to have anybody come into your home, you want it to be family members. Um, and, and though it sounds great if you could get more rent by, you know, going with what the traffic could bear, um, I don't think it really works out for us as a group because we need to be, because we feel a little fragile maybe and anxious and we, we want to be surrounded by, you know, by our family members and not going out and advertising to try to get the highest rent so that we can stay at our house. Um, I had a friend who did that. Uh, um, she uh, uh, bought a two family in Dorchester and um, a family that she didn't know moved in and they never paid the rent and she would complain about this to me. And finally she started and then after about a year she started complaining that she was getting afraid of them because they seemed to be kind of um, she felt that they were um, oppositional when she was asking for the rent and a little hostile and finally I said to her because she was getting quite nervous about all this. I said, well, you know, you know, this lawyer who you were related to, who was an in-law previously, uh, talked to him about getting them evicted. So uh, she did, and the police came a couple of times, and it was very traumatic for her. Um, this is not something that, you know, a healthy middle-aged person, I don't think, would tend to find themselves in this situation because they wouldn't have that level of anxiety. And... Um, uh, it was quite a trauma for her. And then a couple of years later, she was diagnosed with early Alzheimer's. So I would, I, I have no way of knowing whether these people really scared her and were really hostile or whether this was in her own head. But I think that it's an example of how it might seem to make perfect sense to younger people to say, oh, we'll get, we'll, 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 we'll put in an accessory department, apartment and we'll get some We'll rent it out to people we don't know for the highest dollar and we'll get some income. And if you are young and energetic, that may seem feasible, but if you're older and fragile, uh, it might not be a good idea. It might not be a workable idea. Um, and I also think that um, the idea of uh, having your house divided up while you're living in that, um, we older people are about, have less tolerance for disruption. And if you were younger, you could go, I, I can't think of more of a, a greater, you know, disruption than trying to live in a house while it's being divided into a second 
apartment. And I think if you were younger and you needed the money and you said, this is a way I can make extra money, uh, you could live with that terrible disruption. And then you could go out and find strangers who would pay the most money that you could get. And then you could, uh, when you're ready, then you could be moving on at some point and, 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 and sell the house for more money as a two family than you would have got as a one family. And it would be worth all that trouble. But that's not the way seniors are. Seniors want to be quiet and safe and familiar with people they know and have a minimum of disruption and a minimum of changes. They're not in that hard driving stage of life that you would benefit from the ADU as, as it's written. Um, and I actually walked in spontaneously and I thought, I haven't talked to my husband about this. We've been married 50 years. So I was walking into the living room this week and I said, honey, how would you feel if we, uh, what would you think if we, uh, we, would you be willing to divide up our home? We've lived here 43 years. And um, would you be willing to divide it up and, and rent half of it to some strangers if it meant that we could stay in it longer? And he put that as newspaper because we are still reading newspapers. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And he waited a beat. And then he said to me, are you crazy? I mean, he actually said it. He said, we would have to add a kitchen. We would have to add another bathroom. We'd move first. And I think that we just went through this whole thing where we had to get some electrical work done for the smoke alarm. And, you know, that was a major production for us. C you Carol, know? you're starting to be over time. I don't know if you can- I'm, I'm, I'm finished, I'm finished. That, that's just my point that, that what makes sense to people who are younger is not necessarily compatible with people, the nervous systems and the mental and physical energy of people who are older. And I think that the ADU is something that younger people could benefit from, but is not really compatible with, with older people. I like much better this citizen's petition because it's simple, it's straightforward, you're writing to family members or people that you're that you're, that you're hiring to help you, and um, and I think that's more compatible with people my, with people my age and our needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tucker. Um, okay. Is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak before we? Um, Marion has her hand up again, but we have Elaine Benson who hasn't had a chance to talk yet. Okay. Good evening, Ms. Benson. Good evening. Can you hear me? Um, you could turn your volume up a little bit. Yeah, it's my laptop. Is that better? Oh, okay. yeah, it's better. Sorry, it's ongoing issue. Um, okay, so Elaine Benson, Precinct 7. Um, I apologize if this is not, uh, I don't even know how to follow that last speaker, but I will try. Um, yeah, so I don't understand why we have this um, this focus on it being a family member. Um, it needs to be this significant relationship. Um, I don't understand why it can't be a colleague or a friend um, or just anyone. I, I, this this, this rhetoric of like scary, hostile renters, um, this restriction to just family, it's to me, all I hear is racism and classism. And it's like, we only want people to reside in our community, like the peop people that are already within our community. And it's, it's insulting. It's exclusionary zoning. And while the previous speaker did, you know, may not want a stranger in their home, and that is their right, they don't represent everyone in the town. Affordability is a huge problem. Um, and let me, let me just share this. The areas of Milton, with the greatest number of two families, I'm talking P4, P4A, excuse me, I guess there's a P4A, P2, P1, P10, those are also the most diverse precincts in our town. So let that sink in, please. Anecdotally, um, I'm a renter, I've, I've brought this up before, I received letters from people within my precinct stating something to the effect of, we are a single family neighborhood and we want to stay that way. And I took those letters, I slept on it, but then I printed out facts about the accessory dwelling unit and I walked around miles 
and I introduced myself, I was able to talk to four families and meet some wonderful people. So thank you to whoever coordinated that letter because it actually turned out wonderfully. But I, I, I learned from this experience that people were fed so much misinformation and it was scare tactics. And I got invited into someone's home and they, they apologized for not having an open mind and appreciated the information. So I just wanted to share that. Um, I know it doesn't have anything to do with the, the article that we're, or the, the petition that we're talking about tonight, um, but I guess it supports some of the previous comments. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. And thank you for laughing, Meredith. Not to be, not to be, I, I'm like, I don't understand why, why we laugh when people talk about things that are serious. It is disgusting. I've seen it in so many of these meetings. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else um, who would like to speak from the um, public uh, tonight? I am not seeing anybody. Okay. All right, I, I see we have Cheryl's hand up and Kathleen's hand up, um, so. Thank um, you. Um, I appreciate Marion and Alex's um, interest in amending the temporary apartment bylaw, um, but Alex did say when he testified before the warrant committee, I think perhaps two weeks ago, that this temporary apartment bylaw was on the books when he joined the planning board over 30 years ago. No effort has been made in those 30 years to make these kind of improvements. I personally don't believe waiting a little bit longer to make more and better improvements uh, is a problem. Um, we also received testimony that the current bylaw works just fine. We heard some people say that multiple times. Uh, so I, I wanna be clear also about um, the opportunity that we have available to us. I spoke to the chair of the select board today and she indicated that there is time for us uh, to have an ADU bylaw on the warrant for the Maytown meeting. Um, I would like for us, as I said earlier, to have that included in our discussion next week when we're talking about the Maytown meeting articles. And this way, the town meeting will get that chance to debate and discuss the ADU bylaw that it did not get to discuss last night. So I still recommend that our recommendation for this be to send it back to the planning board for further study. Hi, Kathleen, I noticed you were next. Um, I just wanna say that um, I appreciate Marion's comments because we've talked about fixing this temporary apartment bylaw when I was on the zoning board. Because the idea that you have to apply for a variance um, to avoid the situation where you build an extension, then put the apartment in it, you know, it was, it was insane um, because of the way it's worded. And so there's been talk about fixing, as Cheryl said, this temporary apartment bylaw for quite some time. And I do know that the backup at the zoning board, the fact that there's like somebody thinks that we're preventing a couple of months of people, of elders not being able to get these. I have to say, I have a client of mine who's applied for some minor you know var variance at the zoning board has been told the wait's like a year uh, for a hearing so you know it's not going to be uh, you know a couple of months and and i appreciate carol's comments although you know she's only just a little bit older than me and um and when i got my heating bill last month i'm thinking i'm having somebody move in there was a thousand bucks for you know, a month of heating um but you know, the idea that this limitation on the family, I really have a problem with. And that's probably because my family is very small and doesn't live anywhere near here. And so I would love to have had, you know, my dad's roommate, we always called my uncle and, and he could have, we could have put him in something like this. And so I appreciate the fact that, you know, you're trying to sort of say, you know, that we're checking our elderly population, but you have to have a better understanding of what family constitutes these days and a bigger understanding of what constitutes family. For those of us who have really close friends, I lost one yesterday, you know, why, 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 why can't I put something in for, for that person in my backyard? Um, well, not um, out of my backyard because it's pretty much a fence, but um, I just, uh, I appreciate Marion's comments because I know from experience of being on the ZBA, and I just think there's some little things that we could do to tool with this. And I don't think it's a huge delay. 
Okay. So if we delay this, um, the warrant can't put a recommendation in the article. So there would be no recommendation from the article. There, in the printed version, there'd be no recommendation from the no, they still make their recommendation, Denny. It's just that we would provide we our advice, article. which is what we're required to do on zoning. We're provide okay. we're required to give our input on a, a zoning citizens petition. The warrant committee would make their recommendation based on that information and whatever other testimony information they take in. So that that's still their decision to make. Okay. So I'm I'm just trying to um but um in answer to Rich's earlier question, you know, we could spend more time on this, Rich, um, you know, but the warrant won't be able to include our decision on it. Um, if, if we don't, if we don't provide they would, one. They would, to, hopefully um, they would take my point. Sorry. You can have your point. Um, in other words, if we don't if we don't provide a, a recommendation tonight, then they they don't have that information as they put together their. I think they have to decide next week what they what recommendation they're going to put in the print version of the warrant. So there's that. That that's one. That's why I called the meeting. I held the meeting off until after town meeting, so that we could have it separate, let the ADU discussion happen. I understand now that Cheryl seems to be working with the chair of the select board to get- No, the, I, all I said was I had a conversation and because there was an extension of the time that the town meeting would be held for other reasons not related to this because she announced it at the beginning of the, of the town meeting, mm -hmm. um, I asked her if there would be time to add ADU articles since it's already been um, really reviewed and discussed by many parties and maybe there would be some minor amendments to it, but it wouldn't be a wholesale new, you know, completely new from scratch article. And um, she said that um, she felt that it was possible for there to be time. I'm not working with anyone. I just asked the question so we would be informed. Okay, all right. Um, so I had, a, I had a question, oh, please, um, please do. So, because I, the first thing I said last night is I really would like to work towards an ADU article or bringing, you know, the temporary by, apartment bylaw, you know, closer to, you know, finding sort of an in-between ground on both. I think, you know, we, I think, I think we've all shared that we, we feel like we would like to open it up and make it more um, than just exclusively for families. Um, so I think that's one thing that I think we pretty much all agree on. Um, but I, if, if for some reason we can't get this done, I don't wanna hold up the improvements like Marion said to the temporary apartment bylaw because there's no, there's no reason to do that. It's, it's, it would only be a win. And, and I've actually even heard from other people that said, because I think, I think to go forward, I think the cap piece I heard was really important to people, um, the cap of 10. And so if there is a cap of 10, the temporary apartment bylaw as it stands would still be unlimited for family, which if a current resident wanted an in-law, they would not be restricted. So in some ways, I, I would almost like to see a parallel track where we try to work on the AD, ADU. If we can get it done, if we can get something, that we all agree on that we really like, you know, we can say that, you know, that's, that, but I, I think there's no reason for us to not be in favor of improvements to, um, to the temporary apartment bylaw. So I would like to see us, and whether we get it for May or not, I would like to, for us to try to see if we can get an ADU article that, that everyone can come together and say, this is really great for, you know, and everyone's happy about it and it's good for our town and it's, meeting the goals yeah. that, that we're all trying to, to work together and meet. So um, if that is possible, I, I just don't see a reason to not um, make improvements to what we currently have while we simultaneously work. And we may be able to get it done, in, we might be able to get it done for May, but in the event that we can't, it becomes a fall meeting, at least 
like Marion said, we've, we've made those improvements for the people who are currently needing um, a temporary apartment. I, I agree with you. I, I think we can take a progress. I understand it's not as much progress as, as the proponents of the ADU would like, but it is progress and it is going in a positive direction. These are improvements that we have all been, you know, working toward and trying and, and, and wanting um, in, in these discussions. I think it presents um, to town meeting and to the select board and the Warren Committee and to town meeting especially, that we are making progress. Um, I think we can work on parallel tracks. I think, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, we can do these and, and um, you know, down the road, I think we should, you know, look at that, you know, um, family language, um, you know, just loosening, improving that the family restrictions, they can be relaxed. Um, but I think I think it's like we we have a we have a a positive thing that we can do. Make, yeah, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. I'm just just make progress in incremental steps because it, it improves it for you know it, families in need, seniors. You know they, this is what we've been working toward. This is what we've been describing and wanting. So I just think. I think it, it it's an important thing to do. And I, I agree with Meredith. I think we can, you know, go go back, look at the ADU, take take stock of what we have learned from that whole process, and we can we can um, you know see what we can do. Um, but you know, let's let's grab progress while we have it. And you know, if it's incremental steps, maybe that's the way we're gonna have to do it, you know, in incremental steps. I just want to say it goes to town meeting anyway. It doesn't need our vote on it. Right, but I think it would be a positive thing for, for it to go with our recommendation. But as I said, I don't think it makes a difference. Well, I think it does. I think that's why, you know, you 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 were before Chair Asher and he he he, he was requesting it. He, he would like our feedback as soon as we can give it. That's why we called this meeting. And I held this meeting off I, at, because I didn't want to require a vote before we went into the ADU discussion. I wanted to give the ADU discussion some air, but you know, some some breathing room so that we could have the ADU discussion and we could discuss this afterward. And I I realize now it's it's almost too soon, but I mean I think I'm I'm I wanted to have this discussion so that when the Warren Committee had their discussion next week, we could provide, you know, our recommendation. Well. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing because I don't think we're hearing from the public anymore. And at this point, we're we're talking amongst ourselves about happy, what the vote I, should be. I'm happy to entertain that motion. Do I hear a second? I would second. Okay. All in favor? Mr. Beeler? Yes. No. Cheryl? Yes. Meredith? Sorry, yes. Oh, Denny Swenson, yes. Okay. And Kathleen Rain. And Kathleen yes. O'Donnell, yes. Because I made the motion. So yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Okay. All right. So we've closed. I would have done something else otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, I mean, my motion would be that the planning board recommends that the Warren Committee and the town meeting approves the citizens' proposed amendments to the temporary apartment bylaw, section three, subsection A, paragraph nine. That would be my motion. I would um, second it. Okay. I will say I will vote no because, um, and I'd rather not vote no. But I think this needs to be sent back to the planning board for further study. I, I just, I'm confused. I, I've had my hand raised. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Rich. Sorry. Now we're moving to voting. I'm abstaining. Are you going to abstain? I mean, I'm sorry, this, Rich. Is right. this is, this, I didn't even get to speak at, to speak after the, um, after the public meeting. Oh, okay. I mean, I thought we were oh, going to debate it. You, you jumped right to a, a vote. This is, I got to say, I mean, if we're trying to say that there isn't a, a Something we're trying to get to here or ram something through, this feels like we're not we're not going through a process that I've ever been part of in four years. It, actually 11 years. And this is just, I don't know, Denny, I'm just I, it's upsetting because we're, we're like I, uh -huh. I try I spoke a little earlier and then you combated that. Somebody else spoke, you combated that, and then every time somebody something from the public did, then you did. 
normally we go around the table, we all speak, we all talk, we debate a little bit, and then we move to motions. But that was not tonight. I'm just, I'm floored at the process. I just, I, so here's my, I'm going to say it anyway. open to I, I would like to say it anyway, so I'm, I'm going to speak. Um, my, my problem is we heard at the beginning a couple points, and I like that we waited till tonight because we heard from town meeting a little bit last night for hours. We didn't actually get to hear them talk about the merits. We only heard half the sides of the merits. But the half that we heard, they, Kathleen touched on three or four points tonight of literally things that we heard of. We didn't want to move it to town meeting to take a vote because, of, well, there was lots of reasons, but three of the things that Kathleen just mentioned were literally things that everybody was saying last night that they didn't want to even entertain a vote on or a conversation on. So I'm having a little trouble tonight now saying, hey, let's move it forward so that we can speak about it at town meeting. And we're talking about the exact same thing. We're talking about who's allowed to stay there. We're talking about caps. We're talking literally the same conversation. And so on it, I mean, it's too late now. There's a motion on the floor, but I, I would have rather, I mean, this is a citizen's petition that literally will probably not make it to town floor where it shouldn't because it is the same problem. And we heard some things last night that we could probably go back and fix some stuff and adopt it as a, as a planning board amendment. Uh, or a zoning article. That's normally what has been happening. Again, only been on it four years, but that's what, how this is, process normally goes. I just feel like we're rushing really quickly here. I can mean- I, Can I just apologize, Rich? I didn't mean to rush you. I honestly didn't. I, I honestly didn't. I'm very sorry I rushed you. I mean, I can withdraw the motion and bring it up later if that would take some pressure off of you. I didn't, that wasn't my intention. Uh, honestly, it doesn't matter at this point. I mean, okay. it sounds like it's a rush to, 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 to votes. Um, I mean, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what to say. I mean, we, we, we heard a few people tonight, which is representative of what we heard last night. Mm -hmm. Same issues, same problems. This article has the same one. And if anybody's listening, and this, this is, I'm going to say it anyway, this is what bothered me about the letter I got, because it was in my neighborhood, blanketed from people that don't live in this neighborhood, saying that the, the proponents of this are trying to change this into two family homes. I got phone calls from people saying we're going to have double deckers and triple deckers up and down the street. This is not what can happen in that article. Not even possible. It, that way we would have to go for a permit. It's not the as of right that we're talking about. So whatever people were saying to them, I, if it wasn't a lie, then it was just misleading. And so my problem here is, to, to Kathleen's point, it's the same issue. You could use the same, same misleading comment that this is now two family homes. So anybody that was against what we talked about last night should technically be against this too. And so I just, I feel like one of the things that I thought about last night to myself was, you know, I, we do this at my work all the time. Somebody says something. And I could say all day long that I feel like they're wrong and they just don't understand. They could have came to our meetings, we had 13, it's been in the paper. But at the end of the day, there are folks saying that they weren't part of the process. The only thing I can think of is if I had to do this over again, I mean, go back a year, we probably should have started to do, you know, more outreach. I remember when I was running for this board, I was talking to Cheryl and we were thinking about, we were brainstorming. I think we even talked to this Denny. We should do on Saturday some coffee time where we can have people come in. Let's reach out to the public. Let's start communicating. And then COVID hit. <laughs> we didn't do any of that stuff. So if I could go backwards a year, I would probably have started communicating with the public way more and not just assuming they're going to come to our meetings, assuming they're going to listen, assuming they're reading in the paper or on Facebook and all the other media outlets. Because the reality is, is most people don't. Everyone's busy. They're not reading the paper. They read it every so often. I mean, heck, I, I don't read it every, every week. But the reality is, uh, we could have, I could have done better. So my problem is this. If yesterday was too soon, if yesterday we were trying to put something forward that people don't understand, we're in the same boat with this one, in my opinion. And so I don't like the idea that let's just get it through just to do something Literally, the reason why I don't like that is because three or four of the main points that Kathleen was talking about are the reasons why people didn't want it last night. And so you're about to have the same problem. Okay. I, I thank you for sharing your, thank you for sharing your opinion. So that, 
I don't disagree with you and you're, I understand your opinion. The difference as I see it, I just have a difference of opinion is that the temporary apartment bylaw already exists. It's already functioning. These are improvements to something that we all agreed are improvements. So it's not controversial in that, um, you know, it, it, it already exists. Um, Marion said they're not these family, you know, these temporary apartment bylaws for family are not, you know, of issue to people. We have 30 of them. This may allow some more. Um, it's not gonna be a big number because it's just family. Um, um, I agree with you, the SHI thing, but I don't, we, we all agree that it's a small number. Um, but, you know, whether or not it's defined as a two family, I don't know that that's been an issue. I, 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 I don't know. Um, well, that's certainly been an issue. And in May, the mailing that I got on the front portion of it says, yeah, I don't know that that's yet. The ADU is going to turn right. everything into a two family. So there was somebody got that message out there. I don't know who, but I, I never saw, the I saw so. things that were crazy on Facebook. I'm, I'm not familiar with these mailings. I did share the mailings that I received with you. So no, I, this I, wasn't I, I don't know if there are other mailings, yeah. but I don't I'm know. Sorry. I don't know what these mailings are exactly, but I'm I, just referring I, to a mailing that I received and it said it came from the Coalition of Neighborhood uh, Associations. And it was addressed to the Tugayas family um, and it was a two pager and it came in the mail Monday, the day of town meeting started. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so, um, It seems odd to me that you can say that, oh, well, the temporary apartments don't cause the same issue about numbers as an ADU. I, I, don't, see, I don't see how that can be true. Um, well, as Kevin Freitag said last night, you know, there, there was some concern about, you know, could, could the article pass and the limit of 10 not be included? And there was an issue with that there was an issue where it was stated in our planning board meetings that there was discussion about removing the cap either at town meeting or at a future town meeting, and it would only take a simple majority to do so. So- But you don't have a cap on temporary apartments. Right. I mean, you can have it's 500 capped by people. Family. It's capped well, by family. Well, the how- family will limit it from, it won't, because, because we have it right now and we only have 30. Well, that's so just that's kind of Ill, it's illogical, that's, Danny. No, that's because what limits it. The family it aspect doesn't limit it. It just it, no, the family aspect doesn't limit it. Just because it's you can have the same the number, number of families applying for an ADU and a and a temporary apartment. The only thing that keeps a bunch of people from doing it is the fact one, you have to get a variance in addition to getting a special permit. It takes it forever, and none of them are cheap. And, and so also, they, not many people want to charge their family members for living in there. So, there you go. Um, yeah. I mean, the reality That's, is, I agree with you, though. It's not going to cause a lot, but I also think that based on what we see with ADUs, they don't cost a lot, cause a lot either. And so I do agree. I just feel like we heard major concerns that, you know, these are going to. And I feel like either one is going to cause some apartments to happen. Yeah. Um, I actually think that we heard enough last night. Again, it was only kind of from some folks talked. I mean, it wasn't a, I mean, we didn't hear from the mass majority of, of town meeting. Um, so we didn't get to hear all the, they didn't get to hear everything, which is unfortunate, but I do think we heard some things and you, we probably have enough to work on the ADU bylaw um, to make it even better. Um, and so I am looking forward to talking about that again. I don't know. Are these, can these things be merged, combined, or whatever? I don't know. I, mean, I just. I mean, I, I looked at the temporary apartment bylaw. I think it can stand alone or it can stand beside the um, ADU. I don't think it, I mean, it, it can work either way. Like Meredith said, this, it, it could function. And I think these improvements would help it function. 
in a way that it would be available so that family um, could could use the temporary apartment bylaw. Um, well, you were right at the beginning and you said, I mean, the reason why we didn't vote on this last time is because we wanted to wait to hear what people had to say about the other one. Um, and we heard a lot of comments about the ADU bylaw under the guise of um, should it be, you know, be sent back to town meeting. I mean, planning board. And so, but we did capture some things. And again, I'm just sticking right to the points of there were several things that folks mentioned. And if we're not going, if we are not going to listen to those three or four things, then Warren Committee is probably going to listen to those three or four things. And they should be saying, well, guys, it's the same exact problem. Why are you sending this one without doing some work on it? Now, if they don't, then I am floored at why it didn't, last night didn't go to town meeting, because it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's the same issues in both. Um, well, we should okay. we should probably fix those in this article before we send it forward. Um, I mean, there's, yeah, I don't know. That's I mean, I don't think you can change the SHI issue with either of them unless you make them affordable. So, I mean, you know what I mean? So, but. Well, I, yeah, agreed, but I mean, honestly, and again, I, I truly think that some folks that were calling in, while most were very uh, sincere, some po folks were reaching uh, uh, in saying that, you know, why would you put an ADU because they don't go on the SHI? I, I personally don't think that we should only be doing things because they reach the SHI. That's not fair. I mean, the reality is there are people that are just starting out their careers. There are young families that deserve access to housing. And, and guess what? They're not buying a, nine, a million dollar home usually um, as their first home. Those are not, I mean, I live in an area that used to be, but when I was a kid, considered a starter home area. These are not starter homes anymore. Um, mm -hmm. You're not affording these unless you, you're a certain level of income. And so I don't think that we should just be working to get low income uh, or low, uh, affordable, capital A, or however people put it, I do think we should be looking for other means. And I think, you know, maybe this is going to help out. Maybe the temporary one will too, but only for families, which I don't think is right. Um, so I think it, I just am not good with some of those points in this article. And so honestly, I have the same issues as this article. So the last article, I made sure those points were in the ADU and that's why I was good with it. If you remember, I was against the ADU at the beginning of the year. I changed as we started evolving it. This temporary one has things that I was not good with before. I mean, so I would be a no or a send back. And so I leave it up to you guys and how you guys want to handle that. Okay. All right. Um, so, so I'm, I'm guessing, I mean, we can just feel the tea leaves. So Rich, Kathleen and Cheryl, from what I'm gathering, um, do not want to support the citizen article. If anything, they would consider um, recommending that it, um, I mean, K Kathleen, at one point you said you just don't do anything, don't recommend anything. Like we don't have to do anything. We can no, just, we don't, because okay. going forward, it's okay. going forward whether we say anything or not. It's a citizen's petition. So we don't have any part to say about that. I think okay. so we do have a responsibility, Kathleen, to give yeah, an opinion on the citizen's petition related to zoning. You can. You don't. It's no obligation. Okay, I mean, so it's, not, it's not required that the Warren Committee adopt our, our, our right. recommendation yeah. or comment. Well, why, don't, why don't we just leave it alone then? Why don't, yeah, why, why don't we just say... It, Go to the floor, let the citizens decide. No I mean, recommendation. I mean, for what it's worth, I, I mean, no I mean, you, made a, you made a point earlier about like the the merit uh, or the ability of folks to that, you know, if it's a three to two, folks should be able to, you know, let folks know what they feel. I mean, I'm going to be sending, I'm sending a letter to the Warren Committee telling them I think it should be returned and I'm going to give them my reasons. And oh, so, so you do you want to take a vote and have it? I would like to take a vote, but I'm not okay. going to force you to. You know, All right. Well, my my vote would be different, and it's clear to me that I only have possibly one other person with me. So I will. Is there still a motion on the floor? There, There is a motion on the floor. But Who I, asked that question? 
I, I think I, I, I may have withdrawn it because I didn't mean to upset Rich as badly as you I did. You can keep it back. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I, I feel yeah. like, I feel like Kathleen's right. It's going no matter what. So, it, you know, this is either a no or it's a send back. So whichever you guys want to do, it's fine with me. I would rather it be a send back, honestly, um, because I, I, I do think that um, I'd rather not be a no. I'd rather have it be known that I want to see more improvements if we're going to go this route rather than ABU. But I also want to have a, a, a true debate about the ABU. So uh, if you're withdrawing your motion then and willing to entertain one, I would make a, a motion to oh, wait. I'll, I'll withdraw mine and then you can. Okay. okay. So after yeah. I would, I've withdrawn mine. So please carry on. Well, I and then I would like to make a motion um, to recommend that this uh, citizens petition be sent to the planning board for further study. Second. Okay. Discussion. So I am disappointed. Um, I, I, I feel that it, we, it should go, I feel that we should support the citizens article. I, I thought it was full of improvements. I thought we should grab progress where we could. And um, I didn't see any, any of the amendments as controversial. It's an existing article that's functioning. And some people last night said it was functioning wonderfully, fine just fine. Um, we have an attorney that referred to a number of examples where it would, where it's fine and it would be, these would be improvements and good for families in, in Milton. So, so I'm disappointed, but um, I recognize I'm in the minority. Um, so, um, well, I just want to say, Denny, I agree that the temporary apartments need some work, and I agree with Marion's letter. I absolutely do. I was on the zoning board listening to her come before us with those presentations. It definitely is, you know, the citizens' petition definitely makes some changes that are an improvement. But, you know, this uh, sort of the sticking point of trying, I think, as, as, as the chair of the Warren Committee said last night, if, if there is a way to get them to come together... And my first drafts on this ages ago, when I first got on the planning board, were a way to improve the temporary apartment bylaw. I started with that bylaw. And so I'm perfectly willing to sort of take another look, you know, to sort of see a way to have them work together. But I don't see a point in having two of them. Um, it really makes just a sense to have one that works. Okay. All right. Um, I'm sorry, I, to interrupt. I, I'm I'm not sure that there was a vote on. Um, no. We no, we're no. just in discussion. We're just talking yeah. about it. Yeah, we have a motion, a second, and now we're in discussion, and then okay. we'll go around and fi finalize the vote. Right. Um, I just again, I I think there's these are improvements. This is better. There's, um, it's not necessarily where we're going to end up. Um, in the future, I, and I hope it won't be where we end up. But I, in the meantime, until we get our ADU, you know, and we come together on something, I would just, there's no reason why not to improve this um, at this point while we simultaneously work on, um, on language on an ADU. And then maybe we find we can put that language into our temporary apartment bylaw or vice versa. But um, but at least this this makes improvements um, within the time that we're, we're working to to get things that we really think are important that should be in there as well. So I don't I disagree. I, I, I don't disagree. Yeah. I just, my, yeah. my issue is we heard the complete contrary last night from a lot of people that stood up and said, if you put it in, it could get rejected. It could change. These are the things that could happen because, so we're talking, literally talking about the same thing. So last night we weren't good with a few of these items. Tonight we're, we're good with a few of these items. <laughs> And we're hoping that town meeting members are going to forget what they said last night. I, I don't think they will. I think they're going to still have the same issues. And so, you, I, what is I, it that's in the temporary apartment bylaw that that they weren't good with last night? Um, is it the SHI? Because see, the thing is, we have something that exists right. as opposed to adding a new thing. But I, I'm just, I just want to understand. Same, it doesn't matter if it exists. I mean, it's still this similar 
similar, similar points, right? You're putting a law in place. Um, I mean, there's, there's contention around some of these items that will something pass or won't it pass when it gets to, you know, the attorney general. I, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I just, I, I kind of like the, you know, this is a citizen's position. I, I've heard that, it, you know, everyone is saying that it, it was put together well, and I'm sure it was. Um, I don't know. It, we spent a year, and the warrant committee wouldn't even let a, let an ADU be listened to. And so I I don't know how they're going to act in a citizen's petition about changing a bylaw that does some things in here that have sticking points that we heard at town meeting. That's interesting to me because you I mean literally their comment was. I mean, this is the planning board's job. They're supposed to be vetting these things. And we've only talked about this two nights. Um, I, I don't see the point in rushing it because town meeting is pretty, still not that close. <laughs> Get a little bit of time. Um, I don't know. All right. Well, do, do we want to finalize the vote? Does anybody else want to speak to it before we finalize the vote? Okay. All right. So we have a motion can you just repeat the motion uh cheryl yes um motion is to recommend that the citizens petition be sent to the planning board for further study do we i don't know if it's further study but study i guess because we didn't draft it right further study is sort of yeah it's just study to study all right i'll make it that so, so i just want to be clear so this, so you want to take it away from the citizen status to a planning board article? Is that no. correct? No, 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 no. no, no. I'm just, no, I no, wanted no. to, I just wanted to understand that. I what, thought. What, oh. well, right, go ahead, Kathleen. I'm sorry, but but Denny, you said this is a citizen's petition. We're not changing that. Okay. It's still a citizen's petition. Was the reason for this hearing to make it a public, a, a planning board? No, article? but I was asking if that's what in effect would happen if Cheryl turned this back to the planning board for further study. Is that the effect of that motion? Okay, so the thing that would have to happen is if we did study it and we could ask the petitioners if they were willing to accept other changes to their language. Otherwise, we could decide um, to submit a planning board article because we at the moment can't make changes to their article, right? Because it's their article. Right, it's their, it's their article. We can't make any amendments to it. It'd have to be amendments to their article, right? We would or, have to ask them, yeah. we would do our study, we would do our further analysis, and then we would say, petitioners, will, will you accept these changes that the planning board these, thinks would, would be beneficial? And if not, then the planning board could decide to submit their own article that amends the temporary apartment bylaw. So that the study is the part of, is talking about the things that we uh, have expressed our concerns and what I also have said, I think, um, you know, the idea that it needs to have a purpose added to it, and that there's some other things that our town planner has said are deficient in it that we should look at that haven't been. And so, you know, to say, you know, it takes a lot of work to do zoning and to get it to town meeting. And to, you know, to say that it's just, we can just keep working on it um, I think does a little disservice to town meeting and to the Warren Committee and to ourselves because we're we're saying that the ADU that we've worked on for a long time needs more time. And this article has had far less of our time as Rich has pointed out. So uh, in, in my view, uh, it's worth the time uh, to address the things that we've said need to be addressed. I, I just wanted to piggyback off of the, your last two points on that, that I understand your point about wanting more time and that that's a, that's a fair opinion. I don't, I just disagree with it, but it's an article that's already existed for, I don't know, 30 years. It's been in effect. It's getting used on a daily basis. We're adding some amendments. So I would say that that's very different than a brand new article with all, a lot of new concepts. So that's that that's the difference. This is just a citizen, this is just amendments to an article that already exists. You, you're still welcome to have your opinion, but I just think that that we are kind of comparing apples and oranges, and that's why one is different. But um so you have yeah, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, 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 it's okay. It's hard to see the 
I never yeah. seen uh, that. Like, uh, just a quick comment. The only thing I would say about that is, I mean, it's it is different, but ADUs are not different. They're not new. They're they're right. It's just a different state that adopted them. Thing. Like California, huge state adopted yeah. it from every single city and town in the whole state. I mean, Massachusetts is looking at the same thing. Heck, we just got legislation on MDTA you can use. This stuff's coming in yet. Um, what, what I was hoping, quite honestly, one of the reasons why I said, yes, please, let's please hold this till, till today, was I was really hoping that if ADU went to town floor, it was going to be probably beat up, beat to hell, right? It was going to be changed. And I think you heard from folks on this call that even like I remember Kathleen saying before, if they want to take this out or if they want to change that, fine, let's do something and let's move it forward. But this is what, like the majority on the board said, this is what we think is a great one. Now, I could have been on the other side. It could have been us saying, hey, there could have been three to two the other way. This is what we think is a great one. Either way, it gets to town meeting and they're going to make changes, amendments on the floor. We would have voted for them. They could have, they could have said no, but they could have still passed. I mean, at the end of the day, we would have learned a ton for today so that we could have then said, you know what? They didn't like this, they liked that, they didn't like this, they didn't like that. And we would have changed this and it would have carried forward. My issue is we, did, we didn't learn anything last night at all. And so my problem still is, how do you move forward when you really don't know what, what the town wants? And I'm, I hear you on the ones that your points that you like, but I'm passionately against those points. Now, I'm not saying I'm the right person here. I wanted to hear from town meeting on those points, and we didn't. And so, I don't know. I'm hoping at some point we will. Okay. All right. So, we have a motion. We have a second. Um, Mr. Beeler. So, I guess the yes would be um, agreeing with Cheryl that um, the citizen article gets sent back to the Planning but board. our recommendation would be that if the if the planning board is asked for a recommendation, which you know, as I said, still have a question about why anybody cares, and <laughs> the world won't even think about it. Uh, but uh, that if they if they uh, if they they want to recommend a statement from the planning board, our statement would be that we recommend it be referred to the planning board for study. That's okay. The motion. Okay. Can I just, I, Tim? I just feel like we have to run that by town council because I've I've never done it that way before. Uh, Cheryl mentioned uh, an example, but I, it doesn't seem like it's exact. Could we just say in the in that motion? Could we just say pending? Like, I don't sign think you, I don't think you need to hear from town council on this. Forty A is is very broad in terms of it. Just says um, any zoning article needs to either get a recommendation from the planning board or if 21 days pass from the public hearing, then, and there's no recommendation, then there's no recommendation. Um, the, the form of that recommendation, what, what, it, what the content of it is, there's no, you guys can say whatever you want. Whatever your recommendation is, is what it is. Okay. Yeah. I, just, I think this is making it even more confusing for town meeting members. I think we yeah. wanna, we wanna, I just, I know how, you know, how everything, you know, will be discussed. And I, I just don't want to confuse people. I think if we get, if we can go forward with this, that would be my motion and work on our, our ADU. We already have a motion. Yeah, I'm not withdrawing the motion to recommend that this be sent to the planning board for study. Okay, that's, that's your motion. I, I understand. I, I just think it's confusing. So, but. yeah. So I would... Oh, sorry. We both yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So, so Denny Swenson, no. Um, Cheryl Tagayas. Yes. Kathleen O'Donnell. Yes. Uh, Meredith Hall. No. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's all we did. Did you ask oh, Rich? Yeah. Sorry. I, yes. No, I asked I Rich yes before I asked Cheryl. Okay. He, I, I asked Rich and then Meredith spoke. Yeah, yeah. I was just feeling sorry for him. That's no, right. don't, don't be. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, that's it for now. <laughs> Motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, okay. All in favor? Mr. Beeler? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Cheryl Tagayas? Yes. Kathleen O'Donnell? Yes. 
Good night, Denny Swenson. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.